My analysis on the new Super Mario series is over 15,000 words. And wanting to get something out before the year 2040, I asked you what you'd like to see in the meantime. The popular vote was Wii Sports Resort, so here we are. Never playing this game prior. I added Resort because I just assumed it would be like the original Wii Sports. You know, just a simple game you could fully experience in, what, 10 minutes? Great for a quick look. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. I mean, Wii Sports Resort doesn't have an insane amount of content or anything, but this is a huge step up from the original. The five games of Wii Sports have been more than doubled to 12 here in Resort. And that's not including the one or two extra sub modes each game has. In fact, many of the games in the original Wii Sports either have similar counterparts in Resort or are flat out in Resort. This makes the OG Wii Sports more or less obsolete if you own Resort. I mean, it basically was anyway after half an hour, let's be honest. Wii Sports Resort is what Wii Sports should have been from the start. It's great fun. Speaking of things that should have been like this from the start, the Wii Motion Plus adds an extra layer of sensitivity that transforms your Wii Remote into much more than just a waggle stick. Resort was basically made to show off the capabilities of this accessory. And I gotta say, it's pretty dang responsive. Honestly, this and Nintendo Land probably have the most one-to-one -one accuracy in regards to reading the position of the Wii Remote. So, I'd say the most efficient way to go about this is to review each game individually. Let's get to it. Swordplay. Swordplay sees you facing off another opponent with your trusty plastic Walmart lightsaber. I think Nintendo picked a good game to start with because it likely has the most reliable controls out of the bunch. Don't let your Skyward Sword PTSD get the better of you. These controls are actually good, so take it easy. The objective is to knock the other person off the platform by mastery swordsmanship. Nah, just kidding, you just go ape with the remote. <laughs> There is an argument to be had whether or not you can make your way through the game by just wailing the controller around. And I don't know. That did seem to be pretty effective. Even if that is the ultimate strategy though, I found it much more fun to strategically block oncoming swings. Whatever you're playing style, it's a fun game. The two sub modes are Speed Slice and Swordplay Showdown. Speed Slice is like a Fruit Ninja required actual skill. An assortment of objects fall from the sky and you have to be the first to cut it in the correct orientation. Swordplay Showdown has you facing against onslaught of people ready to take you down. Little do they know, you're fucking psychotic so they don't really stand a chance. Wakeboarding. You tilt the remote left or right as you're dragged on top of the water. You have to use the wakes to launch yourself up in the air so you can perform tricks. Accumulate the highest score possible before the time runs out. Wakeboarding is one I wish was a lot better because wakeboarding is cool. Even when you're not doing well, the sense of speed makes this one really enjoyable. But what the game determines as a good landing is inconsistent. There would be times where I would make a pretty rocky landing and it would tell me it was good. Conversely, there would be other times where I would land perfectly flat as it insists you do and it would say I messed up. Not to mention, anytime it says you messed up, the boat slows down. Which, oh my god, it's such a terrible feeling. For anyone who's played Sonic but not Resort, it's the same exact feeling as when you're running fast as hell having a good time, and then you knock into an enemy, and all that momentum is lost. If I played it for another hour, I'm sure I could get a feel for it. But if I did, it would be on my own accord. Because the tutorial is pretty terrible in explaining how to land properly. Especially when it's pausing every 10 seconds to tell you the same exact thing for the 8th time. Go far outside the wake and curve back to build up speed. Yeah, I got it! If you would let me play instead of interrupting me, maybe I could get a feel for it. Really all this game needs is some sort of visual feedback on if you're level or not. Something like this, denoting your access so you can correct your angle accordingly. The wakeboarding is a cool idea overall, but a few small tweaks can make it much better. Frisbee. Register trademark. You throw a frisbee at the highlighted location so it can be caught by a dog. I totally suck at this one, but it's really enjoyable. Now that's a true testament of if something's fun right there. When you suck a fat one, but you're still having a great time. I remember this being the game that was shown when the Motion Plus was revealed, and now I see why. It's pretty accurate, and a lot of fun. I couldn't quite get a feel for it because you're holding a Wii Remote and not a frisbee, but obviously that's not the programmer's fault. Speaking of programmers though, the AI on this dog is pretty dang smart. It knows exactly where to position itself every single time. The sub game is frisbee golf, and that's fun too but seemingly more inaccurate than frisbee dog. Check this out. I throw the frisbee, and it basically hits the target zone, but it makes me go again since it technically wasn't in. So I make my next throw, and... What the hell happened there? I was 2.5 feet away from the goal zone! How is what happened even possible? I found the controls in the game with the dog to be much more reliable, but both are reasonably good. Archery. This is one of the three games that require the nunchuck. You hold the Wii Remote in front of you and the nunchuck behind, as if you were pulling back an arrow on an actual bow. This game is basically just target practice, so aim for the center for maximum points. There's not too much to say about this one. It works as you would expect. You have to account for the drop of the arrow alongside the win for added challenge. Overall, good game. Basketball. You try to score as many baskets as you can in the allotted time frame. You aim down to grab the ball, and then pull up and flick the jump and shoot. I'm pretty bad at basketball in real life, but I sure as hell don't make mistakes like this. Successfully getting a ball into the hoop is really satisfying. Too bad it's inconsistent as all hell. This is another game I'm sure would be really fun if you took the time to understand what the game responds to. But from the brief time I spent, I was unable to do so. And just as a giant slap to the face, there's a 3 on 3 variant. All the other controls, such as stealing the ball and blocking, work really well. Too bad once I stole the ball for the 8th time, I couldn't actually make the shot. Once again, I think this game could have benefited from some more feedback. Table Tennis. 
a far cry from that sideways pong in Wii Play. In Resort, you actually have to swing the paddle. Oh, what a revelation. This is the equivalent of the OG Wii Sports Tennis game. All of the movement is automatic. All the game asks you to do is swing. Unlike Wii Sports, however, Resort takes the angle of your paddle into account, making for a much more dynamic back and forth. It's good stuff. In fact, the extra mode is a lot of fun too. It's an endless rally that keeps on going until you screw up. For some extra bonus points, you can aim at these soda cans on the table. Both this and the one-on-one -on -one are surprisingly solid. Golf. It's basically identical to how it was in the original esports. In fact, the holes from that game make a return here as well. Funny little trivia, but 100% true. Golf was originally not going to be in Wii Sports Resort. During an interview, Miyamoto mistakenly said it would be in the game, even though in reality, it didn't exist in any shape or form. Takayuki recalled Miyamoto saying on the plane ride back to Japan, you know we're including golf now. I've always been a bit indifferent to the golf game of the original sports, and now here in Resort. Reason being, is I don't think it translates to motion controls, as well as, say, something like frisbee. Anyone who's played golf in real life, or hell, even mini golf, knows a big part of learning how to stroke right is based on the feedback you get from hitting the ball. Feeling the contact against your club, and of course knowing realistically how hard you are swinging it, are absolutely invaluable to the sport. Frisbee on Wii works well because even in real life, there isn't any harsh contact, so to speak. Much like you let go of a frisbee, you let go of the B button. It translates well. Motion controls can only do so much when determined determining how you are actually swinging the remote. So that translation as to how it's hitting the ball, and how hard you are actually swinging, can only be a loose approximation. I don't know if that made any sense, so I'll just say this. I think Frisbee has a more accurate one-to-one -one translation on a Wii game than golf does. Bowling, another game from the original sports. Personally, I think bowling feels much more accurate here in Resort, which also means I'm much worse at it, because I suck ass at bowling. But hey, not really fair to knock the game for being accurate. In fact, it should be commended. The standard game is fine and all, but the two sub-modes is where it's at. The 100 pin mode is a game of bowling where every round contains, as the name would suggest, 100 pins. This is one of those things where even if the motion controls aren't working exactly the way you'd predict them to, it's still hard not to be having a blast. There's just something cathartic about watching 100 pins dominoing over. Or in my case, 99 pins. Yeah, for real. Three times in one game, I had a swing that knocked down every single pin but one. If I ever say I have bad luck in video games, please refer to Exhibit A. This is, a. Uh... This is Exhibit A, by the way. Spin control sees you trying the bowl with barricades placed on your lane. Reminds me a lot of that special mode in Monkey Ball Bowling. Though if I had to pick a favorite, I'd have to say I enjoy that one more. Power cruising, or as normal people call it, jet skiing. Jet skiing makes you hold both the nunchuck and the Wii remote sideways. Not sure why they chose to do this though. Okay, let me rephrase myself. I understand the thought process. The Wii and nunchuck are supposed to simulate handlebars. But for one, the nunchuck's motion controls are not nearly as good as the Wii Motes. Especially when you take the motion plus into question. And two, the nunchuck and Wii are detached. Trying to simultaneously rotate them perfectly as if they were handlebars doesn't work super great. It feels much more comfortable to hold and rotate the Wii controller Mario Kart style. In fact, out of curiosity, I put my nunchuck down and held the controller that way. And guess what? It worked! So then why does it require us to use a nunchuck in the first place? Who knows? That aside, the jet skiing is alright. Your goal is to ride through all the hoops. A bit slow for my liking, but it's fine. Canoeing. A game that works much better than I expected it to. You simulate the movement of stroking a paddle with your Wii Remote to reach the end. It's time-based, so you're basically just competing for best distance. Again, it works pretty well. Now only if canoeing in a video game is fun. Biking. Much like jet skiing, you use both the nunchuck and the Wii Remote to steer. Also like jet skiing, it's a game I would have preferred with just a solitary use of the Wii Remote. Cycling doesn't even make any sense though. To pedal, you alternate your left and right arms up and down. Okay, last time I checked, YOU PEDAL BIKES WITH YOUR LEGS! All that aside, it's actually really fun. You race against several other cyclists in your attempts to overtake first. I really wish the controls were better, because this would likely be one of my favorites if they were. As it is, trying to shake the remotes up and down while tilting them to steer leads to a lot of over and under shooting. Lastly, we have the air sports. These are three fairly distinct games that could have all got their own category. Not sure why they're all grouped together here. We have skydiving, which has some great visuals. It starts off with your me jumping out of an airplane. From there, you assume control by tilting the remote in the orientation you want your me to fall. The objective is to move your me to other me's so you'll link up for a photo. The more me's you link up, the more points you're rewarded. At the end, all the me's you have amassed in your photos all show up for one final shot. They form three rings, and if you can manage to fall through all of them, you can virtually double your score. Island Flyover is next, and oddly enough, this might be one of the best games in Resort. It's simple. You control a biplane with free reign to explore every last inch of Wii Resort's location, Woohoo Island. There are several information coins scattered throughout the island, giving interesting little tidbits on various locations. Gotta catch up on that Wii Sports lore, so study up kids. There is an objective, which is to try to collect as many of these eye points as possible in the allotted time. But honestly, objective or not, it's just fun to go sightseeing. The final game is Dogfight, and I do apologize, I wasn't able to play it myself because it's two players only. I was unable to get anyone to play Resort with me in the short time span I decided to do this video. I 
I swear. You tell someone you need some Mario Bros footage, and everyone is lining up at your door. Then you tell them you need them for Wii Sports Resort, and it's all like, Um, actually, I, I got somewhere to be. It bums me out too, because even outside the dogfight mode, this seems like it'd be a great party game of three other people. Who knows though? If you've checked out the multiplayer before, let me know how it is in the comments. Wii Sports Resort is nothing that I expected it to be. Not only is it way better than the original Wii Sports in practically every way, but there's a lot more content here too. I haven't even talked about the stamps yet, which basically serve as a collection of achievements for each and every game mode. Speaking of achievements, come on Nintendo, when are we finally going to get some of those for real? Tons of replayability, mostly fun games. And also, Woohoo Island is just a pleasant place to be. Even when the controls aren't working exactly the way you'd hope, it's hard not to be having fun. I'd say my three favorite games are Swordplay, Frisbee Dog, and Island Flyover. But realistically, none of these games are what I'd call bad. There are some games better than others, sure. But there ain't no pose me, and that's enough for me to give it a recommendation. You can typically find this game nowadays for under 20 bucks on eBay. So if you're feeling a bit nostalgic for those good old days of Wii Sports, I'd recommend dishing out a few bucks for the sequel. Grab some friends, grab some drinks, and make sure to watch that tutorial on how to insert the Wii Motion Plus. No, I'm serious, it's actually in the game. Press the buttons on both sides and insert the connector plug into the controller. Because Wii Sports Resort is a Wii Sports game you wish you had. Hey, thanks for watching! It seems many of you were very passionate about the other two entries on the poll, so if the new Super Mario video takes as long as I fear it might take, expect to see another quick video on one of those first. A huge shout out to patrons such as Amanda Guth, Rami Batter, SN, Rachel White, Ken Colton, Sora.Wav, King Cosmic, Chaz Robinson, Martin Hoshtahagen, Jeffrey Long, Cashinator, Anthony Combs, and Abby Knutson. Thank you all so much, and until next time, have a good one.